the others can uh, watch it through here if anyone get uh, absent yeah can you all confirm whether you can hear me clearly all right okay thank you very much all right so last time uh, uh, i think we have uh, discussed the uh, first lesson as well as the third lesson i start the number system lesson uh, isn't it people can you confirm like uh... yes we did right okay good great right okay so uh, let's take the first lesson first Yeah. And people, I'm planning to have the class from 11.30 to uh, 1.30 uh, by next week. I hope uh, it won't be a problem for you. Is, there, is it, is it uh, uh, problematic to anyone? Like, uh... Okay, Pahanmi, how about you? Is it okay for you to have the class at uh, start at eleven thirty? Yeah, me, uh, it's okay, right? To have the to start the class at eleven thirty, no problem, right? Right, okay, right, okay. So remember, uh, like next by next week, uh, we are starting at eleven thirty, and uh, yeah, we didn't had a time to uh, get on it. Other Amaya be settle when Nakela try karan na balu like. Uh, we were like, uh, yeah, the situation, that's what happens. So for the moment, uh, let's hope and pray this is going to end soon, right? So until that, let's be cautious, right? And uh, let's be careful when we are like uh, going here and there, all right? And, uh, Let's try our best uh, to stay safe. So it will end soon, right? And again, uh, I really don't know why they have uh, banned the tuition classes uh, by uh, letting everything else to be commenced, like even schools are given the permission. So I think uh, there is no point of uh, banning the tuition classes, but I don't know. Uh, for some reason, they are doing it, right? Let's see. Uh, maybe it will get changed uh, in near future, but or maybe it will continue. So, however, we have to obey the rules that the government is sending us. So, uh, let's go like this, right? Okay, let me share the screen. Uh, and uh, if you got any uh, uh, Yeah, if you've got any difficulties, uh, just uh, let me know, right? If you can't see the uh, screen or not, right? So I'm taking the uh, lesson, which is the first lesson first. So, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think uh, we have uh, went 
like uh, did we did we complete the big data uh, thing people can you yeah can anyone confirm up to need of big data. So a uh, need of big data, like, so we are done with need of big data, isn't it? Not indeed? Right, great, great. Okay, great. Right, so uh, we talk about the big data, we talk about why we need big data, and uh, today we are going to talk about the applicability of information in day to day life. So, like, uh, this is something that you know, right? Right, so we use the information for many different things, right? To get informed and to uh, make the decisions, likewise. So, here it uh, describes a little bit, right? So applicability of information in day to day life, the first thing. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, just a second, people. Pahan uh, is uh, still uh, connecting with us. I think Pahanmi is having some communication issues. Let's just give a little. Right. Yeah, let's carry it out and uh, decision making. So it is the best thing uh, that we do out of the information, right? Uh, so like uh, it's based on the information that we get, we do the decision making, right? So it, it applies to anywhere to like, like in day-to-day -day life, uh, in organizational cultures, uh, in institutes, right? In any place, we take uh, the information to make the decisions out of it, right? So, uh, but we have to be very careful is when we are like making the decisions, it's better be assured about the information that we are receiving, whether it is correct or wrong, right? So because correct information will allow you to uh, make a better decision, uh, false or half truths uh, will lead you to some problems, right? So uh, one thing that we do is the decision making. And the policy making, when it comes to the uh, organizational uh, cultures, right? They make their policies based on the information that they are receiving, 
right? So like they have to uh, gather the information and analyze uh, uh, regarding, regarding their organization or regarding a particular sector, right? So then they have to make the policies according to that, right? So like, um, if you take Sri Lanka, we, we really like, like the government so far does not have had a very good policies regarding the, regarding any of these sectors, right? Uh, I don't know why still they are not having a straight policy regarding the, any of these sectors. Like it's like changing from government to government in Sri Lanka. Right? But uh, if you take the developed countries, they have their own vision, they have their own policies regarding the uh, education, health and all these things. So everyone is like uh, trying to come up with that particular policy to uh, success in a way they are going to have that. So it, it affects like policy making effects individually, organizationally, governmentally, right? Uh, and ultimately it's around the globe, right? As, as one word. So like, uh, everyone or every institution will consider the information and will do the analyze to have the policy regarding some particular uh, regarding some particular factor right uh, so for that we use information and planning scheduling and monitoring and uh, that is that is another major thing that uh, organizations even individuals are doing like we always plan for things uh, if, you, if you are not planning it very well, you won't be able to continue or like uh, perform the task very well. So you should plan, you should schedule when it is going to be done at what time. And as well as you have to monitor, right? So when it comes to the organizational uh, point of view, or like, like into organizations, they are having very big plans ahead, right? And uh, they do the scheduling according to that and they monitor whether the scheduled task or the planned task will happen according to the schedule and is it uh, managed to get into their uh, goal as they, like, uh, as they pre-planned, right? And as well as for predictions, we use that, right? Not, not the predictions, this uh, Joe Fisher paper says, right? Uh, they don't really, uh, most of them, like almost every of uh, every one of them are not uh, making are not doing the predictions based on the information they just uh, i don't know they just uh, have that uh, ability of storytelling by looking at looking into someone's uh, birth date and the uh, uh, what uh, some other details right so most of the people are depend on the things that uh, those people are uh, like preaching, right? But this is not that kind of predictions, right? It is, it is uh, some predictions that we are going to take based on the information, like, like we are predicting yourself. Teachers, teachers are having a prediction or, or, or particular picture in the future about the students by knowing how they perform in the classroom. Right, so we know who is going to perform well, who is not going to perform well, and due to what reason. Right, so based on that, we can advise to particular students: you you better go on this particular way. You better practice these particular sectors or sections for you to score a good mark in your examination. So to do that, we need the information. Right, that's why we are having the basically the examinations, tests, kind of things are there. So from those, we can have the idea about the uh, students and we can predict what is going to happen in the future, right? So, uh, yeah, hold on a second, people. So uh, that is what is regarding the predictions and uh, 
yeah those are the four major uh, parts that we are talking about how the information are being applicable uh, in the day-to-day uh, -day life right and the next one is talking about the available technologies related to the information dissemination so like how it has been distributed using one using which kind of uh, technologies right so from there we can uh, find three types of technologies, which is one is the radio uh, transmitting technologies, right? Which uh, uh, use the uh, electromagnetic waves, right? Uh, to distribute the information uh, from one point to another, right? So but when it comes to the radio waves, uh, it is. It has a less strength compared to uh, the microwaves, but still, both of them have greater, like 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 a greater distance uh, range regarding the communication. But comparatively, radio waves are less spreading than the microwaves, right? So, like radio waves are there to like do a little range and microwaves are having a range like 3,600 kilometers and above, some, something like that. So radio transmission technologies, they, we, we basically use it for uh, listen to the radio and watch the TV, right? Both are uh, experience, you know, like transmitting the same thing, the electromagnetic wave. So when you change the frequency, uh, it gives you another channel or new channel regarding that, right? So in your device, you have to tune until it gets better. And uh, the technology is like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, right? Wireless fidelity, we uh, call the extraction of the Wi-Fi. So those kind of technologies are based on the radio waves or the electromagnetic waves, right? So Bluetooth is, a, is, is having less range compared to the Wi-Fi, which is having a greater range, right? So those kind of things can be taken as the, uh, what we call the radio transmission, like the uh, electromagnetic wave transmitted technologies. And uh, when it comes to the microwave transmitting, there are two types. One is one we call terrestrial and the other one is called satellite, right? So terrestrial communication happens as it shows on the left-hand side picture. So the station will be there. It will transmit a message to a, towards a station which is situated uh, Uh, in, in, in another location, right? So both are on the Earth's surface, right? So one particular uh, transmission tower will communicate with another transmission tower using the microwaves. And they are, those are called terrestrial microwaves. And there's another one called satellite microwaves, right? So the satellite microwave, uh, what they're doing is from the base station or like the from the earth station, which is uh, giving the uh, uh, signal or like uh, generating the signal will be communicated with the particular, what you call the satellite and satellite will then retransmit uh, to the receivers or like the uh, one who's waiting to capture that particular frequency, right? So there are two times, which is, uh, which we call the terrestrial one and the satellite one. And regarding the internet technologies, uh, we, are, we are discussing about this in the 13th lesson, uh, not actually the 13th, the 11th lesson, uh, which is called the Internet of Things, right? And here what they are trying to do is they are, basically they are talking about a machine communicating with another machine without the interference of a machine. Uh, with, without the interference of the men, human, right? So one machine is communicating with another machine without interference of the human. 
So um, uh, we, we call that particular networks as Internet of Things, IoT, where we're going to learn at the 13th lesson, right? no, 11th lesson, I'm sorry. And uh, those are the ways that we can disseminate the details, right, or the information. Right. So, uh, Yeah, so then we are going to talk about manipulating data and information, how we are going to manage those things. Right, okay, people just give me a second. Right, so the manipulating data and information. Now there are two ways of manipulating this, right? Uh, which we call the manual manipulating and the electronic manipulating. So when we are manipulating or managing the data, managing it in a, a manual way, will cause you many different problems, right? So it will, uh, it can create data inconsistency because like uh, the similar data, when similar data is kept in different formats in two different files, uh, like uh, it, it should, the data should match always. Right, it should match. In case if you got change some of those or one of those, then it will like uh, create the inconsistency. Right, it will gives us the uh, what you call uh, like the doubt which particular one or like which particular data is going to be the correct one. Right then. So two files are there. Uh, then we are going to have a problem. What is the correct name? Your name is duplicated in two different books. So one book having the correct name, another book is going to have an incorrect one. So when someone refer into these, they will got a problem. What would be the correct one and what would be the incorrect one because they don't have any clue. So that is what you call the inconsistency. And uh, it can easily have duplication of data. Right, so like uh, by a human error or maybe 
due to the day that they are going to record. Right now, as an example, right, uh, let me illustrate it to you. Now I should take the drawing pad to do that. Oh no, this is not the one I need. All right, so uh... Right, so if, if, you, if you got something like, uh, let's say a table. People just second. Uh, Yes. Oh, this is not good. Yeah, so let's try our best to go with this. Okay, that's good. All right, so uh, if you think about a table which has the uh, student ID. Now, since this is a smaller space, I'm going to be in very great problem. Right, let's say uh, they are having student ID. And name. And let's say sport. All right, so let's say someone calls someone.
yeah let's say s001 will uh, the name is someone will do three three sports let's say he's doing cricket volleyball and swimming so someone Yeah, no, it is not responding. Why it is this? Hmm, this is not good. Yeah, let's 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 assume it, right? So the same summon goes here, goes underneath summon as well as. Right, S001, Saman, Cricket, S001, Saman, Volleyball, S001, Saman, uh, Swimming. So S001 and Saman will repeat it. Right, so those kind of things are called the duplication, right? It's an unwanted duplication. So there can be duplications inside the database. Uh, we can't like get rid of it but we will be able to reduce it, right? So that is the way it happens. Okay. Right, uh, and uh, we were talking about, yeah, the duplication of data. So, that kind of a duplication is unwanted, right? Up to duplicate when Karana Venatang enough, right? So, on those places we have to duplicate. It is not going to be a, a day, it is not going to be considered as a data duplication if it is necessary, right? And lack of sharing information, right? In manual method, if you, if you write in a book, so you will be able to share it with another one. So, to share it with another one, you have to give the book and hand your book over. Right, so which is not uh, like very convenient for the people, right? And room for errors, yeah, of course. Uh, since it is done by a human, there can be errors, right? Because we are not four men, we are not hundred percent okay with this, name. so like there can be things. And uh, human error and delay in process, yeah. So like. Uh, uh, processing, like if you are given two numbers to add, you will add it quickly. If you are given like uh, a number which 10 characters, you will take some time to do it, right? So likewise, uh, human arrays, errors and uh, uh, delay in processing is a drawback of the uh, uh, the manual methods, right? And reduce customer services. It is because why we are having a customer service is because that particular company is handling a very good information system, right? So if it is do done by uh, manually, they have to uh, record all the details regarding the customers in a book or in a file or somewhere, <laughs> right? So because of that, the customer service will get reduced because it's hard to find them, hard to access, all right? And uh, uh, the last one is talking about infeasibility of applying manual methods, right? So which is, which are the things that we discussed a little while ago, right? Security problems, human errors, knowledge and skill level, yes. And uh, different attitudes, all right? So those can be taken uh, as the infeasibility of applying manual methods. Then, then, then after they are talking about 
how to get rid of these drawbacks in the manual method using the uh, electronical manipulation. Right? Oh. So the first one is eliminating data redundancy now. Data redundant uh, like uh, you know summary topic is a signal. So when you when you when you redundant redundant a particular uh, data again we are going to lose the uh, uh, like, like the in, like, like the accuracy of the data and the uh, completeness of the data is going to be missing when you are having uh, the redundancy, right? So as well as you, it is easy to maintain, right? And uh, the reduced storage cost, you know, like uh, just think about you are going to write the things in your uh, Let's say, let's say in your, in your mobile phone into a book, how many books you need to do, right? So likewise, so it will uh, reduce the storage cost. And then data integrity. So integrity will be there, right? So uh, data integrity will give you the reliableness of the uh, of particular data right and data independence now here independence means uh, earlier it was generated only for a particular machine but now right? with the involvement right uh, we can take the data from one place to another using uh, mobile storage devices Right, but earlier, if the punch card is created, it, that particular punch card is only for that particular machine. Right. So then the last one is the privacy. Right. So the privacy is it can be uh, uh, like heavily compromised, and not, not compromised actually it can can spread right. things. Or like the uh, uh, regarding the security models, uh, when it is on a manual book, right? access uh, It is easy to access, and if you need to uh, give a privacy or like give the protection or the security to a manual book, you have to put it inside a cupboard and lock it, and you have to remove all these things. Right. But when it comes to the electronical uh, database, it's on the uh, put in a particular username and a password. So only that particular person will be able to uh, access uh, a particular any particular documents. Right. So the next one is about the internet like before we go to that is it clear so far people what we have discussed is it clear all right great okay so these are some uh, small facts now here we are going to talk about the computer networks, the internet and the WWW. Right. So here we are not going to uh, like talk about the computer networks in very deep, but limited bit. Right. So this uh, internet was was not there like uh, back in nineteen uh, fifties. Right. So in nineteen fifties they had uh, a project called ARPA. All right, so that is uh, something that the uh, Americans have done. Uh, like uh, to show that they are in leading parts of the uh, in the science as well as the defense. Right, so they need to uh, uh, what we call like the requirement was 
to communicate from one particular place to another particular place. Right, so in 1957, uh, like they built up this particular uh, ARPANET and uh, with the time it's, it, it has become the WWW or the World Wide Web uh, in this particular uh, scenario, right? So uh, what happened later was this ARPANET model was tested to or like was examined to have the internet all over the globe. Right, so since it is uh, possible, right, then they were like uh, spreading the word, like uh, this is the way it's going to connect. So nowadays it is, yeah, we are not using the ARPANET, we are using internet, right? Okay, so uh, this uh, ARPA project, uh, there are some details regarding it, you just uh, read it through. And uh, when you are doing the uh, communication in between a computer and a web server, HTTP is the one uh, which allows you to uh, do the, uh, uh, all these things. And TCP IP is a common, uh, internet protocol structure or a, pro uh, or a protocol which ensure or like which uh, press on the data when they are trying to face the, uh, the communication between two devices. And, and TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, right? So, uh, The IP addresses or the IP is based on uh, the TCP or there is another one called UDP, right? So those two. Okay. So finally, we are going to talk about uh, the final means the end of the session. We are going to talk about uh, the services given by the internet because uh, internet is not just website it gives us many different uh, opportunities as well as in different ways how it happens okay one particular uh, facility is www you can say it is the most popular one and then the second best is the file transfer. You can upload your file to your uh, website, right? And uh, the email server, right? So like when we are having the uh, Gmail accounts, uh, like we are not having it in our phone, in, in our phone storage, right? It's, it has been, uh, sent to a one particular one big place where they can, uh, where, where, the, where the people can access by giving their username and password. So it is like a big cabinet. So like uh, containing all the mails of each and every one. And we are giving a username and a password. So with that, we can only open what belongs to us. Right, so similar kind of thing is happened with the mail and the mail server. So email, all the emails from anywhere from the world are stored in one particular uh, computer and that particular computer can be accessed through username and password. Right, so that is what happens with the email and the telnet is called the uh, remote network access uh, so, the peer like well, how do you know a team we have a base of ten, eh? So it, it works on this base, right? So uh, simply remember a remotely uh, TNA computer account, 
தமாங்க அகத்தியனை கண்டுக்கிறார் தம் அவன் ஆகிறாங்கன்னு மற்ற குழுவாங்க இன்டர்நெட் ஹரஹா தவ கம்ப்யூட்டராக கேட்கறேன் இன்டர்நெட் ஸோ வி கால் இட் டெல்நெட் அண்ட் வீடியோ கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் சம்திங் வி டூ ரைட் ஸோ வி டோன் நீட் டூ எக்ஸ்பிளைன் இட் ஃபர்தர் அண்ட் ஐபிடிவி ஐபிடிவி இஸ் அ ஒன் லைக் we can we can watch several different uh, tv channels without having the connection of like from the antenna or from the tv or tv or from the uh, uh, like anywhere right so like uh, those kind of things po tv dialog tv kind of things those are not ip tv they are just uh, set up their set up box just to like move like this right but when it comes to the ip tv you can purchase a ip tv component and uh, the seller will uh, uh, brief you what are the ways or what are the things that you can connect with this so like in most of the times uh, it can access many different channels so if you have in a uh, like extra uh, monitor or kind of a thing so you can uh, search it or you can uh, seek it using a set of box right so then file sharing yes of course uh, we do file sharing in many more times right so like uh, and uh, ip telephone it relates with the ip uh, tv as well so again uh, what you can do is you can communicate with any device which has a electronic uh, kind of things right so like uh, if you got the ip telephone facility you can uh, contact a person who is communicating through the uh, uh, what you call not another phone can be a, it can be a, a laptop or it can be a tablet right or it can be a desktop right still ip uh, telephone works with all those things like uh, when we have the connections clearly right and iim instant messaging service uh, is a, a, a chat service right so you know a lot about that chat right so all things Uh, category on the bill uh, this particular paper or like this particular topic right so uh, people i am not going to go further than this so today i am going to end the third lesson from here so we are we need to talk about world wide web next week right so let's uh, shift back to the uh, the number system is right okay yeah before you uh, sh- uh, like switch the lessons is there any uh, unclear part for you to get clear all right so since we got no questions we can move to the uh, number system lesson let me check it right over here you go right so in number systems uh, i think we have talked about uh, two types of conversions isn't it or like just one let me can anyone confirm from where up to up to which point we have discussed
decimal to non-decimal. Okay, okay, okay. So today we are going to uh, get to know about how we are going to convert non-decimal to decimal. Right, so uh, converting non-decimal to decimal. Uh, Okay, so when we do the uh, conversion from uh, non-decimal to decimal, so I have to uh, uh, manage with this to somehow. Okay, this is the small ones. All right, so what we are doing is like converting the values in the For some reason, it is not uh, getting drawn paper. People, hold on a second. Okay, good. And then don't bother about the stars, right? I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, people, but I don't have the option. Yeah, let's, let's use this. Oh. 
Okay. Right. So when you are like converting decimals into non-decimals, what we have done was we multi we, we divide the uh, whole number part and we uh, multiply the uh, the decimal part. All right. So today, what we are going to do is we are going to do the reverse. All right. So doing reverse means. We are converting non decimals into decimals, right? Like two, eight, and 16 hexadecimal things will be converted into decimals. So, since you two have done the uh, IT for all level, so this is not something very alien for you, right? So, what you have to uh, no is like it's the place values that matters right yeah no option we have to Erase it. Right now, I am like uh, writing. Okay, this whiteboard is giving me a very hard time. Can I see that anything else is there? This sucks. Hmm, right away. Gotcha. Right. When uh, let's take a value like this. Now here I'm illustrating it with the decimal points. So so far you know that these things are having two to the power zeros, two to the power one, two to the power two, and two to the power three. Right? So that means one, two, four, and eight. Right? So uh, when it comes like to the right hand side of the decimal point, this is a decimal point. Right, this gives you the uh, values of two to the power minus one, two to the power minus two. Right, so two to the power minus one means one over two. Right, and uh, two to the power minus two means one over four. So one over two means zero point five. One over four means zero point two five. Now what you have to do is you have to uh, uh, multiply the 
place value from the symbol value right so yeah i'm trying to minimize this particular thing which is not working right so uh, i'll use a different color so 8 into 1 0 into 0 right so likewise 2 into 1 1 into 1 0 0.5 into 0 and 0 0.25 into 1 will be the multiplications then we are going to add them up right so which is going to give you 8 into 1 is 8 2 into 1 is 2 1 into 1 is 1 uh, then 0 0.5 into 0 is 0 0.25 into 1 is 0 0.25 so 8 plus 10 is 8 plus 2 is 10 10 plus 1 is 11 11.25 is going to be your final answer, right? Okay, is that clear people? All right, great. So, When it comes to the octal values, it's going to be eight to the powers. Hexadecimal values, it's going to be uh, 16 to the powers, right? And uh, the decimal part comes only with the uh, binary value in case, right? Decimal like a uh, But in case, uh, if it is given only the uh, this particular one only, right? What we call the binary values only. Others won't to be having octal values, uh, decimal part again, next decimal decimal part test. Right, got it clear? Right, so let's do some uh, math regarding this. So let me clean this. Right, so the first one is going to be the uh, four hundred. Thirty five in octal, and the second one a thirty. Right, okay, give it a try, people. Tell me the answer. Uh, through the chat. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a binary one as well.
uh, red okay uh, yes learning the uh, let me check let me check Yes, first one is correct, Dura. Well done. Right for the A13. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, that's correct. Yes, Lali, that's correct. Yeah, do the uh, binary one as well, do. Nikini Dua, how about yours? Ah, yes, Nikini, first one is correct. Good. Ah, uh, yes. Now, uh, I know you guys will be in trouble since I have uh, erased the one that I have done it. Make a NH to the power minus one. This is to the power minus two. And the last one is to the power minus three. Right? So that means one over two, one over four, and one over eight. If it is getting hard, just let me know, people. Lalindi, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, let me check.
Yeah, that's correct, Randy. That's correct. Nikini's second one is correct. Uh, try the binary conversion to a Yes, great, Nikini. That's the answer. Well done. Right. So let's move to the other two conversions, right? Okay, which are very uh, similar to the uh, all of the conversions, right? Yeah, that indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Not in the uh, Octals and hexadecimals too. Right, and uh, so the next, uh, in the next, we are going to talk about how to convert the binaries into octal and hexadecimal, which you know already, right? So, but this time we are going to do it with the decimal points. All right, so as an example, I'm taking the value one zero zero one. One point one zero one one and one. Right. So this is a binary value. So this binary value is we are going to convert this into a, a octal and hexadecimal. Right. So here you have to be very careful because here we are going to deal with this decimal point. So now both of you know the conversion, uh, what the conversion will do is it will uh, group the binary value uh, into, into parts which has three bits inside it, right? So we are going to group this where uh, each group contains three bits inside it. So when we are grouping, remember we are going to start the groupings from the decimal point to both the ways. So this is going to be the first three digits. So next we, we left with two. And from here, this is the first three bits and other two is going to left, right? And then we are going to write the place values regarding a single group. So this is going to be one, two, and four. This is the same. So here, it's going to be four, two, one. 
if you are reading from the uh, right hand side, well, left hand side. And this is the tricky part. Now here, this is going to be four and two, right? So it's better you remember from the decimal point to, towards the left side, it's one, two, four continues. And from decimal point to right hand side, it's four to one, four to one. Over the Indiana the pattern, the Indiana direction they got to four to one, four to one. Ki ki ani the varan. May pet take nan gula man to four. Right, got it. Then the thing is very easy. You consider a one particular group and take the number. So this represents three, this represents three. Again, I'm sorry, this is not representing three, this is representing two. Yeah, this represents two, this represents three, and this represents five, and this represents six. So final answer is 23.56. Right in octal. Right, I want you to uh, write this down, people. So quickly just write it down. If you are done, let me know. All right, great. So same happens with the hexadecimal. So to do that, I'm going to use the very same uh, example here. So still we are starting from the decimal point and we separate it for groups of four. So again, decimal point towards right hand side. One, two, three, four. And when you are naming the place, it's one, two, four, and eight. And this is one. And right hand side, it's going to be eight, four, two, one. And this last point belongs to eight. So now it's the same way. This is one, this is three, and this is eight plus three, 11. 11 means capital B. So eight stays eight. So 13, right? So 13, B, eight. Right, so this is going to be in hexadecimal. 
right? Okay, copy this down as well. This is the letter B, people. All right, great. So let's do some two maths over here. Let me clear this. Okay, these are the questions. So the first one. Uh, it's better you write the question, right? Mamita question really and give the owl and all. Convert the followings into octal and hexadecimal, right? So right. One particular thing needs to be converted into both octal and hexadecimal, right? Right, give it a try. Each and every one need to be converted to both the uh, bases, right? 8, 10, 16.
Okay, let me see. Yes, yeah. first one is correct. Yeah, letting the just wait, I'll put it there. Yeah, this is the second one. Oh, Lalindi, can you can't you still uh, see this? Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, for some reason, screen was disturbed. Hold on. Though. There you go. Sorry for that. I can't see the notifications and all these things in the tab.
All right. Okay. Let me check. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, Nikini, yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, very good. Both answers are correct. Well done. Right, so same goes with the uh, other way around, people. Right, same goes with the other way around. Oh, good. So you had a biscuit. I need to sit down. Okay. Yeah, this is dusty. Go, go to the red, go to the red seat. Go to the red ones. Red ones. Right. So this is the last conversion that you have, which is uh, the simple one, the uh, other type. Right, so this is the other way around. When you are given an octal and hexadecimal, uh, how to convert it? So you know it right now. So the Shuhara, it's the uh, other way around, right? So here we go. So I'm taking. Uh, 37.5. Five, three. So what we are doing is we are writing uh, each and every component as a three bit three bit group, right? So like uh, every bit, not every bit, every symbol is going to be written by three bits. So this contains the place value of one, two, and four. According to that, we are going to put ones and zeros. So to create three, we need one over here and we need one over here. Here we don't need anything, so it's zero. So in the very same way, we are going to fill up these things as well. So this is going to be, we need to create five. So it's going to be one and one over here and zero over here. And here we need to have seven. So it's one, one and one. This is three again. So it is zero, one, one. So when you are writing the answer, you can omit the leading zero and the ending zeros since it is the since it's a uh, like floating point value, right? So the final answer can be written as like one, 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 dot, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, right? So this is converting octal into a binary. Right, write this down.
Okay. Lalindi is done. As well as Nikini. Right? Both are done, right? Nikini Dua, are you still writing? I think you said done the middle, done kill the no done things. Right, okay, right. So uh, the other conversion. So what we are doing is we are converting a b dot five c hexadecimal into a binary value. Right. So in here we are going to write each and every symbol as a four bit value. Yeah, and this four bits contains one, two, four, and eight. This is one, two, four, and eight. So what we are going to do is we are going to create C. Now C is, we know, like C in hexadecimal, that means A, B, C, which is 10, 11, 12. C stands for 12. And B stands for 11 and A stands for 10. So we are going to fill these things up. So to make 12, we need eight, we need four. We don't need a two, we don't need one. So five, it's four and one. So rest of the things will become zero. And for B, it's 11. So eight plus two is 10 plus one is 11. So this is zero. For 10, eight plus two. So this is going to give you the uh, final answer as one zero one zero one zero one one. Then you should have the dot. Then zero one zero one one one, and you can leave out the very last uh, zeros because those are uh, we don't uh, we can disregard them since it is after the decimal point, right? Okay, write it down.
Right, great. So let's do this two simple maths and uh, we can end the session then after. Right, so uh, yeah, here it goes. So write the heading, uh, convert the following, write the question, convert the following into binary. So, so the first one, this is October. And the second one. Yeah, this is the exodusy. No, you just took it. I didn't took it. I didn't You you have. It seems you have. That is not you one. That is fine. No, that is not. So far, the class is doing the class. Say what I am. The class is doing the class. Wait. The class is doing the class, baby. That's not funny. Wait, so hard. That keep is it, funny. Keep it, keep it Yes, uh, let me see. All right, okay. All right. Suhara, don't do it. Okay. Right. Great. Hold on. Then I'm hurry. Okay. So uh, let's end the session from this point today since we got only two. Let me to put that in a pass or any connection. Right. Uh, we'll continue the other things from the next day. Right. So it's going to be 11.30 to 1.30 people, right? I'll put the message to the uh, group as well, right? So let's go on like that. Right, so thank you very much.
have a nice weekend people right i'm going to end the session from here right thank you thank you very much people thank you very much right okay nikini right okay rajendra thank you